Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Honorable Speaker, more and more cases of femicide are being reported in Kenya, with at least 500 women being murdered in Kenya in a span of six years. In January 2024 alone, over 10 cases of femicide were reported and not all perpetrators have been brought to account yet. The failure by the government to hold the perpetrators accountable has led to a culture of impunity and impedes deterrence. Femicide violates Kenya's women's fundamental constitutional and human rights to life and the freedom from violence. The government of Kenya, through the State Department of Gender and Affirmative Action, must address the discriminatory norms that underpin such violence and send a clear message that femicide will not be tolerated. Mr. Honorable Speaker, it is incumbent on the government of Kenya to implement Articles 26 and 29 of the Constitution of Kenya 2010, the Protocols to the Africa Charter on Women and People's Rights, and on the Rights of Women in Africa, Maputo Protocol, and the Convention on Elimination of All Forms of Discrimination Against Women to ensure women and girls are safe and free from all forms of gender-based violence. Honorable Speaker, while Kenya government agencies have made various commitments and pledges, few have been followed by concrete action that end to end the surge of femicide in the country. Kenyan members of parliament are calling on key actors to prioritize investigation and prosecution of cases of gender-based violence. We also call on the Director of Criminal Prosecution to keep the public updated on the ongoing probe and share information on perpetrators who have been arrested. The judiciary must also expedite the hearing and discrimination of the cases to ensure access to justice for survivors of attempted suicide. Honorable Speaker, therefore, as the world marks Valentine's Day today, women parliamentarians join other human rights organizations in the Dark Valentine campaign in the remembrance of all the lives lost as a result of femicide. As at 14th February 2024 this year, lost 13 beautiful souls to femicide. The number, of, the number 13 is not just statistics. These are our daughters, sisters, mothers, and more importantly, human beings killed, murdered, and butchered in the most inhumane way. Starlet Wahoo, age 26, location South B, Nairobi, date of mother, January 3rd. Harriet Mora, location Katoloni Machakos, date of mother, January 8th. Stella Odongo, age 21, location Bondo Siara, date of mother, January 11th. Bridget Ochiang, location Nyakach Kisumu, date of murder, January 22nd. Sarah Wairuru, age 47, location Kirugu, Kiruga Nyeri, date of murder, January 18th. Sarah, age 45, location Kilai, Maroc, date of murder, January. Asunta Wanjuru, age 30, location Yandawa, date of murder, January 16th. Rita Waini, age 20, location Roy Sambo, Nairobi, date of murder, January 14th. Nelvin Musetti, age 28, location Langata, Nairobi, date of murder, January 11th. Grace, Grace Wangari, age 24, location Giburai, Kiambu, date of murder, January 21st. Queen, age 25, location Magalini, Kilifi, Date of murder, January 14th. Rachel Wambu, Joroge, age 55, location Gapundu, Kiambu. Date of murder, January 21st. Maureen Achiang, location Bondo Fiara, date of murder, January 3rd. On Honorable Speaker, on 27 January 2024, we held an annual national protest demanding an end to this scourge. To put this into perspective, statistics show that out of 546 deaths by femicide, in the recent years, 241 were of the perpetrators were husbands, 130 boyfriends. Women are being killed, murdered, and butchered by people they are at first instant thought they were safe with. Honorable speakers, 
speaker. The case was Kevin Kangethe, who murdered his girlfriend in the USA and left USA for Kenya, got traced in Kenya, was arrested and taken to the police station. At the police station, he escaped and has now been rearrested. Again, clearly points to the lack of seriousness in the handling of femicide perpetrators. A society is judged by how it treats the marginalized and most vulnerable. Women in this country undergo many challenges, and it is imperative and we demand that women must be treated right. We are unapologetically demanding that women's dignity must be upheld and women's lives in the country matter. Honorable Speaker, in conclusion, we therefore demand that the Ministry of Interior issues a status report on all cases of femicide and investigations that have been concluded and the perpetrators who have faced the law in court. That the President makes a declaration issued on violence against women and femicide as a national crisis. That an executive order be issued on zero tolerance to violence against women and femicide. That all political parties initiate disciplinary action against its members who make misogynistic statements and statements supporting and inciting and encouraging violence against women and femicide as well as those accused of the same. That they may be responsible and less sensational reporting from media houses on femicide and violence against women. Viewer discretion in the release of unnecessary violent details and images must be adhered to. We demand dignity even in death for victims of femicide. The, to, we encourage media houses to engage feminist experts to help them improve reporting practices. Women are more than half of their viewership. Um, thank you, Madam Speaker. And with that, I would like now to call the Honorable Super M South MP, uh, Carolio Mondi, to second the motion. Thank you. I thought members are simply debating on the points, but you may proceed, Carolio Mondi. Thank you very much, Honorable Speaker. I think I stand to contribute to this motion for the simple fact that men should also be counted at this particular time. If we leave it purely to our sister colleagues, it would look like this nation, the males don't care. A honorable speaker, the distinction between femicide and the other typical uh, acts of violence against women is the gender content, where 